Welcome back to Live Now from Fox. I'm Jeannie Francine giving you another live look out in Gaza now at 840 on the East Coast as the Israel Hamas war rages on. We know half a year into this war, more than 130 hostages still remain in Hamas captivity. The fighting continues along with a looming humanitarian crisis. Joining us live this morning to further break down this ongoing conflict is senior lecturer in Homeland Security and Criminal Justice at the University of New Haven, Mr. Ken Gray. Thank you so much for joining us this Sunday morning, Mr. Ken. Good morning, Janae. Glad to be with you again. Glad to have you here. Today marks six months of this ongoing conflict. Looking back on October 7th to where we are today, catch us up, Mr. Ken. Um, are we closer to this war ending or do we have a long way to go? Well, the Israelis are trying to uh, eradicate Hamas. There is still around 10,000 Hamas members somewhere there uh, in the Gaza Strip, many of which may be down uh, close to Rafa at, at the southern end of the Gaza Strip. So as far as achieving that goal of uh, ridding the Gaza Strip of Hamas members, the Israelis still have a way to go to do that. At the same time, the humanitarian crisis here has reached a breaking point. There are uh, Palestinians, women, children who are starving due to the lack of aid coming into the Gaza Strip. Under normal conditions before October 7th, the Gaza Strip was supported solely by means of humanitarian aid. They don't have farmlands, they don't have the ability to sustain themselves. This has disrupted the flow of humanitarian aid into the area. And after the catastrophe last uh, week, of uh, uh, humanitarian aid workers for the World Central Kitchen being killed as their convoy came under fire by uh, an airstrike by the IDF. Uh, th this has even more restricted the humanitarian aid getting in there. So you have war uh, continuing on. You have uh, this looming humanitarian crises. And on top of all that, you now have the Israelis uh, striking against uh, Iran uh, generals at an uh, embassy in Damascus, Syria, killing four top uh, uh, generals and other members, uh, which uh, Iran has promised to uh, get revenge for that, to, to strike it back at Israel or the United States in response to that. So a lot of moving pieces here. Absolutely. You did mention that humanitarian crisis. I popped up a shot in this box on the screen uh, to our left showing that Rafa border crossing where many people go to get that aid. Um, now with what happened with the World Central Kitchen and those aid workers dying, are we seeing less and less aid? Because I can tell you I haven't seen any many aid trucks on this feed uh, since we came in this morning. Yeah, the, the flow of uh, trucks across the border has been greatly reduced. It's twofold problem. One is the attack on the, uh, the World Central Kitchen uh, employees there, the aid workers who were in that convoy that came under fire. That's part of it. But the other part of it is the fact that the, the normal Palestinian security forces that would accompany the aid trucks into the Gaza Strip to keep them from being raided before they get to the distribution point, those had come under fire by the IDF and they stopped doing that duty. And therefore trucks going into this area were going in unaccompanied by any type of force. Consequently, they reduced the flow of aid because of that, because they did not feel safe going into the Gaza Strip. That now, the plan to uh, bring food in by water, the World Central Kitchen turned their uh, ship around that had humanitarian aid and sent it back to Cyprus after their uh, aid workers uh, were killed in that conflict. So uh, the flow of goods into the Gaza Strip, instead of increasing, as has been talked about, instead has been decreasing to a trickle. Now, the Israelis did start to open up a northern gate into the Gaza City. Uh, that northern gate is normally for foot, for foot traffic. Uh, they are trying to open up to allow trucks to go through there. There is a port that is 25 miles north of there that uh, would be able to take food aid uh, by ship and uh, send it into the northern part of Gaza City. But uh, that, that has not happened yet. So 
The ability to get humanitarian aid into here still is greatly reduced. The Hamas itself had called for the world to stop doing the airdrops. They, they felt that they were unsafe and that they were degrading and that demeaning and that they did not want to have aid to be uh, airdropped in, that it was a meaningless amount of food coming in by that uh, route. Wow, well, that's really uh, counterproductive of them, considering they've been stealing the aid that was on the ground. You wouldn't think they would have any um, problem with how the aid is dropped, since many of them were taking it from those displaced Palestinians that needed it. Wow. Well, Mr. Ken, right now I want to transition to this ongoing hostage situation. We know since the very beginning on October 7th, when this war broke out, Israeli military uh, officials and the Israeli government saying this is not a war against the Palestinian people. This is a war against Hamas to bring those hostages home. And when you think about the different ages of the hostages, even the different health concerns of some of the people and knowing it's been happening half a year they've been in Hamas captivity. Um, they weren't able to grab their medicine with them when they were captured. Many of them just taken at a moment's notice. I paint this picture for us, Mr. Ken, being in captivity for six months. Maybe they had parents that were, um, you know, on their way out, um, you know, who were on the verge of death themselves. I actually read an article where this woman said um, she's close to dying and her dying wish was to have her daughter back in her arms before she died. Yet today, her daughter is still in captivity. My goodness, paint that picture for us, Mr. Kent. Yeah, the, the number of hostages that are being held and the number of hostages that are still alive are different numbers. Uh, the last estimate I saw said that around 99 of the hostages being held uh, may be still alive. Uh, just uh, two days ago, uh, a, a hostage member's body was uh, uh, returned back to Israel um, and so he was uh, Elad uh, Katzer, who was taken from the kibbutz uh, near Oz, and uh, his body was returned back to his family uh, in Israel. Uh, so not all the hostages that are being held are still alive. Uh, this is, uh, but nonetheless, negotiations continue on. We are close to uh, Eid al-Fitr, which is, marks the end of Ramadan. And this was supposed to be a Ramadan ceasefire that was being negotiated. We're almost at the end of Ramadan, but uh, the negotiations continue. It's now uh, being hosted in Cairo, uh, and uh, there is some movement on it and some hope, but nonetheless, uh, it still has not happened yet. The ceasefire was supposed to be linked to the return of the hostages. Uh, now they're calling for a ceasefire and a call for the hostages release, but the, the two are not quid pro quo. It's not linked together. So uh, I think in, in Hamas's case, the uh, limitation of uh, humanitarian aid getting into the Gaza Strip is a bargaining chip for them, just like the hostages are a bargaining chip for them. And so Hamas uh, may very well be holding on to these, trying to use it to force Israel to remove all IDF forces from the Gaza Strip. So uh, they, they may not be playing fair at, at the bargaining table. And at this hour, Mr. Ken, so many questions remain. Are we closer to this war ending? Are other people going to step up? Partners such as Egypt to help displace Palestinians? What does the humanitarian crisis look like? Do we have any answers to those questions that we were still asking uh, six months ago? So the UN Security Council voted 14 to uh, zero with one abstention in the United States about uh, an immediate ceasefire and uh, the return of the hostages. Um, and so uh, th there has been appeals to the UN in general uh, uh, concerning this. Um, you know, there, there is a real push towards trying to get some type of immediate ceasefire in place. Uh, that, of course, will be contrary to the intention of Israel trying to, to neutralize Hamas. As long as Hamas remains, as long as there are still 10,000 Hamas members in the Gaza Strip, then they are a threat to repeat the October 7th attack that started this entire process. But I think the other key um, component that we have not talked about is that Iran plans to strike 
Israel and or the United States. And depending on how that attack occurs, instead of being at the, close to the end of the war, we may be close to the beginning of a regional conflict here. Uh, Hezbollah has have been raining in a steady uh, barrage of missiles across the border. Uh, the Houthis, uh, while uh, a little bit more quiet now than they had been. Nonetheless, they are still there being a problem. And Iran uh, may be going to use their proxies to attack Israel or may take action on their own. So uh, it is. It, we will see in the coming days whether this is close to the end or close to the beginning of a new conflict. I'm so glad you mentioned that. That was actually going to be my next question. Many viewers were concerned about that as well because of the wording. They didn't know, is Iran saying they are going to attack the U.S. Um, as a whole, or is Iran saying they're going to attack U.S. troops in that area? Uh, specify that for us, Mr. Kent. So let me give you the example of al-Qaeda. Um, we, uh, in the summer months running up to 9-11, we knew that we were going to get attacked, but we believed at that time that the attack would be against U.S. interests abroad because we had never been attacked uh, by a major attack here in the country by al-Qaeda. Same thing uh, with this, this threat by Iran. We think it's going to be against U.S. interests abroad, whether it will be one of our bases in Syria, uh, or whether a base is in Jordan, or whether it'll be against the U.S. interests elsewhere abroad. But that's not necessarily the case. We ignored the fact that the attack could be inside this country by al-Qaeda. The same thing is true with this uh, promise uh, retaliation by Iran and holding the United States responsible for Iran's actions. And so uh, we should be ever vigilant against the potential of attackers coming into this country. And Hezbollah uh, acts as a proxy for uh, Iran, and Hezbollah has uh, resources both in Mexico and in the United States here. So uh, we could see that attack take place right here in the United States, but more than likely, it'll be against our uh, interests, our bases in either Syria, Iraq, or in uh, Jordan. Goodness, I think either way, it's very concerning, especially when we are discussing uh, U.S. and American troops and even innocent lives here in the U.S. Mr. Ken Gray, you know, I don't take your expertise for granted. I truly appreciate you joining us this Sunday morning and your dialogue. Is there anything else you'd like to add before I let you go? You know, uh, six months, this has been a long time. A lot of people have died. It's time, in my opinion, to, to try to resolve this one way or the other. Absolutely. And I know I said that was my last question, but as you say that, we also know that um, Benjamin Netanyahu and his cabinet, his government, they are on the brink of potentially being overturned. The Israeli people not happy with how he has um, handled this conflict. Really quickly before I officially let you go, Mr. Ken, is there anything that you've heard on your end as far as um, people wanting him out of office or his response to that or even him working with U.S. allies? Janae, he was under political uh, problems even before October 7th mm -hmm. uh, because of the the arguments over their Supreme Court. Uh, and so he was already operating from a position of possibly being replaced. This uh, conflict kicked off. Uh, they tried to form a, uh, a government to be able to uh, take care of the Hamas problems. Members of his cabinet Benny Gantz, uh, for instance, the person who is probably going to replace him, has been traveling around uh, to the European and the United States uh, to, uh, to try to find support. And he has been working against uh, the, their current efforts there. So uh, we've just seen a week of uh, a, a violent protests going on in Israel against the current policies, against the fact that they've not resolved the hostage situation. And uh, I think that there's a good possibility that the politics may end this conflict more than anything else. Additionally, they've lost the backing, the total backing by the Biden administration. They say they're still supporting them 100%, but at the same time, they do not like the plan for the entry into Rafah. Uh, the, by the way, I didn't mention it, but the Israelis have actually pulled uh, a number of their troops out of the south there. They pulled a thousand of their IDF members out of the southern part of, uh, of Gaza. So uh, I'm not sure what that is all about. But uh, again, politics may very well be the thing that ends this.
Mr. Ken, thank you so much again for joining us this morning, discussing six months into this ongoing conflict of the Israel-Hamas war. Thank you for your dialogue. You enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you. And literally, as we are discussing this, a live look out in Tel Aviv, Israel, we are now getting a shot of Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu. I'm being told by my producer this feed is not in English, but as Mr. Ken just so eloquently put it, you know, this has become uh, widely politicized and many people not happy with how the Israeli government, specifically uh, Benjamin Netanyahu, has handled this conflict. And we are seeing live out in Tel Aviv, Israel now that Netanyahu is speaking um, as we are marking uh, six months into the war and looking and seeing that there are other partners there speaking. Uh, again, this is not in English, but just wanted to show you this shot uh, live on Unfiltered here on Live Now from Fox 